I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, I'm going to teach you a regional dish. It's a Chicago style hot dog. Here's a picture of it. Now, before we get started, I'm going to go to the fridge and grab a beer. Maybe you should too. I'm enjoying a platform basic beer. John's enjoying a basic seltzer. They're not related. Before we get started, I know this is a regional dish, and I'm not from Chicago. I've been there a few times. They don't really like it. That's not important. What I want to acknowledge before we get started is that I'm not going to make the perfect Chicago hot dog. It's not going to be authentic. It might not even be close to what you, the viewer, understand as a Chicago hot dog. But acknowledging that, I'd like to ask you, especially if you're ready to get angry at me, to just take a breath, count to 10. Ask yourself, why are you upset at a YouTube video about a hot dog? Think about all the times in your life that were better than this experience you're having of watching a YouTube video about a hot dog. Maybe some other people in life have you know, bigger problems than not making the perfect Chicago hot dog. Have you tried counting your blessings? Maybe you should have a beer. Count slowly to 10. <laughs> Think about that time you went to the petting zoo and you had a nice time. Maybe it's okay for people to like different things. <laughs> have you called your mother recently? <laughs> have you told your kids that you love them recently? <laughs> Why do you even live in Chicago? <laughs> what are the consequences of not making the perfect Chicago hot dog? Is anyone gonna die because of it? If you, if you think they are, <laughs> you should really take a breath and then count the pain. Relax, calm down. Everything is gonna be fine. Imagine that the space where you begin and everything else ends is uh, vaporizing. Imagine yourself in oneness. And that hot dogs aren't that big of a deal. What would your mother think if she could read your YouTube comments? <laughs> count to nine and then go one more and count to ten. I don't care that you're angry at me. <laughs> okay, everyone feeling good and ready for this recipe, this YouTube video about hot dogs. Let's begin. Some history on Chicago hot dogs. They gained popularity in the Depression era, uh, you know, which is now almost a hundred years ago. Yeah, we're, we're coming up on 100 years. And it, the, all these, this is a hot dog with a lot of bullshit on it. And I say that out of love because I love putting lots of toppings on things. But hot dog vendors in the Depression era threw just tons and tons of stuff on the hot dog as an incentive to get people to eat more. And you think about like how many people were hungry through that era. It was a way of just like eating more of a full meal than just you know, slamming hot dogs like we Americans do these days. These days. So yeah, so this, it has a ton of stuff on it. I've had it a few times, I love it because I like all the shit you throw on it. But it's, it's pretty messy to eat, to be honest. I mean, that's the real downside is, it's like, it's a lot of toppings for, you know, a hot dog. So we'll start with prepping the hot, the, the toppings. And like any recipe I ever make, it starts with an onion. I have a pretty small onion here. This is a yellow onion. And really, I think we'll only need half of it. You might call it half an onion. If you're an angry Chicago person, you probably, one, you probably don't watch this show to begin with. But and two, you don't understand it. People really like when I say half an onion. But we'll do a, a pretty, a pretty fine mince. And when we say fine, we're referring not to the quality, but rather the relative size of the little bits of onion. Are you from Chicago? Have you been watching us all along? Are you okay? Did you count to 10? All right, there's our diced onion. Minced even. You could use whatever onion you like. Oftentimes a sweet onion is used because 
I think, particularly for people who don't like onions, that seems to be the most accessible onion, where it's not as spicy and it's a little sweet. I tend to think people who prefer that out of onions have small brains. But, you know, we're, we're trying to approach this as authentically as possible. <laughs> All right, next up, we're gonna slice a tomato. And I grew this tomato, so that's gonna be super good. Because it's gonna go on a hot dog, we're gonna slice it a little bit differently than you might other things. But look at that, look at that beauty. This is a nice, nice tomato. They don't grow them in Chicago like they do here. So we're gonna slice it into, uh, we slice it in half, and then we're gonna do these strips. Uh, also known as slices. It's a pretty technical term, if we're honest. But if you think about that, you can place that along the hot dog. So that's why we did that. Now, a, a uh, pickle, a cold packed dill pickle is the type of thing that you're gonna put on this. And the ones that are made for sandwiches are pretty much perfect because is a hot dog a sandwich? Fight about it in the comments. Yeah, fight, fight about it in the comments after you calm down. But these will be great. Depending on how much we load them, we can leave it as is, or we could even slice it to make it a little thinner. But uh, it's pretty frequent you'll actually see uh, a spear so more like a, a chunk of cucumber that is then cut in half that's common but it's pretty unwieldy other things we will need we're going to use celery salt we're going to use poppy seeds and we're using poppy seeds because we don't have access to poppy seed hot dog buns it's a very specific thing that the chicago hot dog uses but you know how you make a poppy seed hot dog bun you put poppy seeds on it another thing just noting, like, particularly for the people who are very enthusiastic about how this recipe should be made and should calm down, they steam the buns. It's uh, it's gotta be steamed. Am I gonna steam the buns today? F no, this is a home recipe. I'm not, I'm not steaming buns. But I read it in like all, so many, so many comments on all the recipes. Some guy was like, buy an over the pot hot dog bun steamer, which I think is probably a stick that goes over a pot of water. And it, it, his final thought was, so worth it. I, I feel like that's all I have to say about that. We will also use yellow mustard. Yellow mustard is traditional. We're going to use basic and we're gonna use Coleman's. Now Coleman's is English yellow mustard. It's a little zippy and I like it. Jimbo, the farmer introduced me to this and it's been trending in the PGC Discord. I told everyone to buy it and people are like, hey, that's zippy. And another thing we need is sweet relish. So part of why this is a, an interesting flavor combo is that you have both a dill pickle and a sweet pickle. But the most authentical recipes have neon green sweet pickle relish. So I'm gonna show you how you can hopefully get it to turn that color. John seems pretty excited about this. His eyebrows went way high. Okay, so there's our relish. I like Mount Olive. Mount Olive's a good brand. Not authentic. This is ancient blue food coloring. I think this is as old as I am. A single drop. Oh my God, it's perfect. That is literally the color. It actually doesn't even look that neon because it's in a, green, a greenish bowl. Why do they do this? I do not know why they do this, but that's it makes them feel good. I feel like that's good enough. Good enough for me. All right. And one of the other toppings that we do not have access to are sport peppers. They're a pickled type of pepper. They're a small green pepper. You basically have to order them. They don't sell them around here. So we have two substitutions today. One of them is trapeze peppers. So these are small Tabasco peppers, which have been pickled. And this actually is sold more for the vinegar than the peppers themselves. The other one I have are Mazetta hot chili peppers. And actually a lot of pictures of Chicago dogs you'll see actually have this exact pepper on it. I saw tons of pictures with them. I tried them, they are a little spicy, but these are the closest things that I had available. But that's what we'll use. So when you got everything set out like that and you colored the relish for the lulls, we're gonna cook the hot dogs. And the hot dogs, obviously they're the star of the show. Today I will be using Nathan's Jumbo Restaurant Beef Frank's dinner size. These are not the correct hot dogs to use. Calm down. These are the hot dogs I bought for to feed my in-laws and then we didn't have hot dogs. So that's why we're making this recipe because so I have leftover hot dogs that I need to use. They are all beef, so that is correct. They should be natural casing hot dogs. So natural casing means, I think it means it's an intestine casing. And typically when you have a high quality natural casing on a hot dog, 
it'll it'll have like a snap to it when it's done. These are these do not have a case, so they're just like regular hot dogs. However, sometime fairly recently, late in the night, I watched a video on what hot dog brands are good, and they recommended Nathan's. <laughs> I don't know why I watched that video, but the typically the way that these are prepared are they're boiled. I think that's true. Fight about it if you want, I don't care. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I personally do not prefer boiled hot dogs. I really don't, but that seems to be what you do. I only hate Chicago because of your fucking toll roads and how many, that is, so many. I've paid so many fucking fees for not understanding how those things work. It's un-American. All right, actually it's, it's hyper-American is what it is. All right, so we're gonna boil some water before putting the hot dogs in. Again, I'm following advice I read online. I don't know if it's legitimate, but apparently you boil the water and you put the hot dogs in the water and I think you just leave them there. I think you turn it off and somehow that cooks them. I guess that's how heat works. So I don't think there's anything else for us to do right now, but wait for that to, to boil. Not authentic at all. You could boil them in beer. Some people like that. We've done that before. It makes them taste like beer. Or you could just drink the beer. Wash your, wash your dog down with a beer. What a weird episode. <laughs> Cook the hot dogs. Here's a pro tip. If you put the hot dog water into the water, it'll make them taste more like hot dogs. You, you can see it in there. I forgot to mention Vienna all beef hot dogs, natural casing. That's, that is the OG hot dog of choice. And you might even be able to get them around here, but like I said, these are the hot dogs I had. So they were the ones we're eating it. And we'll turn the water off, why not? Okay, listen, I just realized these aren't even like, you know, crazy fancy hot dogs anyways. So I ain't got time to just let them sit in a warm bath. So we're gonna turn the water back on. <laughs> deal with it. But deal with it in a healthy, positive way. Don't, don't be mad. You could be mad at the government or something, but not at a video about hot dogs. Are they done? I knew a guy who was vegetarian because he didn't like meat, but once a year he would eat one hot dog. That's the only meat he could eat. Can you imagine hating all meat except for hot dogs? <laughs> Weird. Weird stuff. This is how you cook hot dogs. You spin them around in there with your long tongs. Long tongs would be handy if you were working in a hot dog stand and you could be like, here you go. All right, well, we'll just be boiling these weenies. How would you know they're done? When there's an aromatic smell, I don't know. I'll pull one out and poke it. I'll poke the weenie. See you there. All right, the hot dogs are done. I can smell them. That's a, a sure sign. You can see they're starting just to curl a little bit. If I squeeze them, they feel very hot. That's how you know the hot dog's done. All right, let's make our dog. Couldn't be easier. Warm up the buns. Don't steam them. Unless you have an over-the-pot hot dog steamer, then I guess it's fine. I'm going to microwave them. All right, those 30 seconds. You can see our buns are steaming, therefore they're steamed. These are shitty buns, by the way. You can see how weak they are on one side. It's sad. All right, so here's how we do it. Your choice. You can put the mustard below or on top. If you believe the people who say that no hot dog vendor will put mustard on for you, then obviously you would put it on the top. I feel like it doesn't matter, because it doesn't. But what I am gonna do is because the Coleman's mustard is a spreadable mustard, on one of these, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spread it. So the left one is Coleman's. It's gonna be zippy. Zippy! All right. Now, get you a pickle slice. And isn't that so nice? That's, it's like literally perfect. And maybe, maybe I'll put it on the thin side. And you can get, it's typically two tomato slices. So grab two that look like they might fit and drop a hot dog onto the bun. The cool kids are calling these glizzies. Glizzy, I think, refers to a gas station hot dog. I don't actually know, I'm not cool enough. All right, now we're gonna hit it with our totally green and definitely not blue relish. It's close enough, okay? And we will add some onions. I like a lot of onion, because I like onions, and I ain't no bitch. And from here, on one of them, we will add yellow mustard. I don't really have that much yellow mustard. So that's what we got. The other one, now oh, it has mustard, it's fine. Then we will hit it with poppy seeds. And now that we have something on the top, that's something for the poppy seeds to stick to. Or you can put it directly on the bun. Finally, celery salt. This is, you use a lot because it's a, one of the main flavors. And that's not final. 
Oh, oh. Then you top it with two peppers. So one of these, I'm gonna add two of these crappy Tabaskis, like so. And the other one, I will add two of these other kind of peppers. And believe it or not, I believe you just leave them with the stem on. Are you okay, Chicago? You just like eating f***ing inedible things? And that's it. That is today our version of the Chicago hot dog. What you will see is that it's overflowing. <laughs> it's gonna be really hard to eat. But that's fine. That's fine. We're not, we're not above disgracing ourselves on this channel. And by ourselves, I mean myself. So, let's give it a taste. I'm gonna try the one with regular yellow mustard first. And because I am not a maniac, <laughs> I'm gonna take the fucking stems off these peppers and throw them out, cause that's where they belong. All right, look at this. I, this is this is ridiculous. This is what this is. That's really good. I already knew I liked it, so it was that. I do want to take another bite though, because I didn't get everything. Oh, so when I got that pepper in there, it really elevates it to the next level. It's awesome. The uh, to me, the experience of eating one of these is more akin to like it's more akin to like a fully loaded burger where you got like all the nice veggies and sauces and you know toppings and shit. Same concept, but it's a hot dog. And I, for one, love all that bullshit on the hamburger. So I like it on a hot dog too. So that's that's our first dog. Let's try the second dog. Which I might have to do the same thing of eating two bites. I think I'll like this one better because I love the mustard, but we'll see. It doesn't taste that different to me. Oh, so with the pepper, ah oh man, they're tied. They're both good. I do really like the Coleman's in it because it gives it even more zip, so it's a little bit more spicy. I'm sure that's not super authentic to have it even be spicy because Midwesterners, but yeah, they're both fantastic. It's like, it's just life. I'm excited to eat these foods. Now, if you made it this far without getting angry, good for you. Good job on enjoying a not very serious YouTube video. You did it. That's how I did it. You might do it differently, but the way I did it, it tastes pretty good. So with that, John and I are gonna enjoy these fine hot dogs with some chips, some beers, and we'll see you next time on P G C, which is the name of our show.